Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick review on the Car Pure Ride 103 and why it could be the best investment you make for your daily commuter. Hey everybody, my name is Emeka and this is Driven Hard. And in today's video, I am in my mother-in-law's Mazda and we are doing a review on the Car Pure Ride 103W. 103 means 10.3 inches of widescreen and this is an absolute blast to have in a car that doesn't have a modern infotainment system. So what I'm gonna cover in this video is very, very easy basic installation, some user features, and I'm gonna give you some live driving of what it's like so you can see if it bounces around and how well the voice activation works with it and your phone because that is absolute key when you're buying a system like this is you want it to be hands-free you want it to be able to do exactly what you would expect it to do so that's what i'm going to be covering in this video as always there's going to be links in the description below if you want to go check this out on amazon or directly through the company i'll have a link there as well but let's dive into the device itself first off so um, it allows you to have wireless or wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'm obviously using Apple CarPlay right now, but uh, it works just like you would expect it on any other system. Um, when you go into the actual user interface for CarPure Ride, uh, it allows you to do a couple cool things. You can watch YouTube videos directly on this by mirroring your phone onto the screen here. My kids absolutely love that. In fact, I'll play a little clip. Just got this new Car Pure Ride full widescreen and it streams or mirrors my phone, which is the coolest thing ever. But so they love little things like that. All right, so using the interface, pretty standard here. If you wanna to go to your Apple CarPlay, you're just gonna hit that and uh, you'll go to your Apple CarPlay. Uh, if you want to go into settings, set everything up. It works like every other device works here. You go into settings, go into your Bluetooth. I'm not going to spend your time walking through that. It's really, really straightforward. Bluetooth setup by this point in time, I think everybody knows how to set up their, their, their phone on Bluetooth. What I do want to talk about though, is what it's like to live with this thing every day. I've had it for about a month and a half now. And full disclosure, if I didn't say this in the beginning, they reached out and sent me this device. Um, I did not buy it. It is about $330, but I know for some people, they need these type of things in their car. And that's great. Um, having it over the last month and a half, when I don't have it in the car and I'm driving somewhere because it's like I've just taken off or whatever, I hate looking at my phone. It is so, so much better to have the screen up here versus on my phone and I'm just, you know, looking down at my phone or going through songs or, you know, audiobook or whatever the case is on my phone, a text. It's so much nicer having an actual screen there when I have to drive this car, for example. So I do want to run through some of my, my likes and dislikes on this system and whether or not I would actually recommend it. Is it worth the 300 and whatever dollars it's on sale for right now? So first off the likes, the screen size, love the screen size. It utilizes the entire thing. It's phenomenal. It's super easy to use, but here's the best part about it. The screen is more responsive than my Range Rover Sport. I was blown away when I first tried it out. I was like, how did they get it right and Land Rover couldn't, albeit it's on the old Land Rover system, not the Pivi Pro. But that was crazy to me. And so I just love, it's like using your cell phone. It's just so responsive, it just works, it's quick, it's easy to use. That, it's, it's just a joy every time I use it. And that I thought was really key because if it's, if you have an external device like this and it's not easy to use, if it's not, if you don't enjoy using it, you're just not gonna use it and then it's just a waste of money. So this is definitely not that. Um, the only issue I have with the screen is it does not work with glare at all. For some reason, when the sun's shining here in Mexico and there's glare, I never had any glare issues with my Range Rover screens. This thing hates the sun and that's my only pet peeve. It does have auto brightness, which works, you know, it, 
dims at night and gets brighter during the day, but the glare for some reason, there might be like a screen protector or something you can do that, that might actually compensate for that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know that there's an option for that. But that's my only pet peeve about the, the, uh, the screen there. Um, also, it doesn't block the view. So there's two ways you can mount this. You have, what I have right now, it's just a basic suction cup mount and you can move it up, down, this thing swivels. It's fantastic. Or there's a more standard mount, which, or more fixated mount, which uh, is a more permanent fixture. I prefer this because of the incline of the windshield and the dash design on this car. And it's not my car, so I wasn't about to drill some holes into it and uh, get yelled at. So um, I chose with the section cup mount, you can mount it on the dash or on the windshield. You play around with that. Like I said, install is really, really easy. Um, another thing that I've really, really come to like on this is the overall ease of use. Uh, you want your power cord, you're gonna plug in your power cord that's going to go into your cigarette lighter. Okay, you want to connect your iPhone or your phone to it, right? You take your USB, plug it in here, plug this end into your phone, and you're connected. If you want to use the wired um, functionalities of it. Now, caveat on that. I could not do wireless mirroring of my iPhone to this thing. I could only do it through wired. Um, just full disclosure, that wasn't a big issue. Would that prevent me from buying it? Probably not, but just so you're fully aware of that. Now, let's get to the dislikes. The biggest dislike that I have on this thing is, is the seven seconds and it's gone. Literally, somebody will steal this in seven seconds. They will crack the window, clean it up, rip the thing off your dash, and they're gone in seven seconds. That's my only pet peeve, okay? Now, how do you fix that? When I'm parking on the street at night or something like that, just Boom, take it off its power, take it off, shove it in the glove box, you're good to go. You just have the mount left. That I'm way more secure with than leaving it parked on the street like that. I think that's just a high risk factor. You shouldn't have um, a $300 item just saying, come and take me. So the, the only other thing I don't like is it doesn't allow you to do play Netflix or Amazon Prime Video or anything like that, but it does allow YouTube to play. Um, so I don't know if that's a software issue or if they have to do an update or something like that. But like, like I said, I have the kids and they love stuff like this. And so not being able to play Netflix for them, if we're like chilling in like, you know, borderline or whatever, and they want to watch something that's kind of a pet peeve, but they also have iPads. So does it really matter? Is it a, is it going to prevent me from buying it? No, it's not. Um, and I guess the only other thing goes back to the whole seven seconds and it's gone is it's not a permanent fixture in the car, but I guess, you know, if you have an older car and you need an upgrade, these are your options versus spending like $67,000 for a new car. This is a bargain, then, right? Because it does give this older car a much more modern feel. And I think that's the end goal that you're looking for when you're buying a device like this. It's small, it kind of give you, a, you can, I don't know if we're losing light here, but you can zoom in and kind of see the, Suction cup, suction cup bracket, but like I said, lots of other guys have done install videos, so if you want an install video, just click on one of the other videos. I just wanted to kind of give you some real world experience. Now what I want to do is I want to take you in a quick drive of a video I recorded when I was calling my mom so you can see in real time how it works with, there's a lot of car or road noise in this particular car, but you can see me use my voice control and everything on how it takes a call. So let's go to that right now. Hey Siri. Call Olivia. All right, guys, so you can see it's calling my mom, right? All right, so it's the machine. But you can see I was able to use Siri and um, audio and everything works great. Even though there's, there's a lot of noise from the, from the car and the tires right now, it was still able to pick up my voice and everything. So that's a win. So in all honesty, is the CarPure Ride 103 a sound investment for about like, 
I think it's around 360 bucks and there are some coupons if that Amazon's offering right now for like 50 or $70 off. So you can click the links in the description for those. If I had to, if I had to buy this and I was driving this car daily, would I invest $300 or so in this? Based on how well the navigation systems work on it and how easy the screen is to use it, I would. I've enjoyed having it in the car more than I have not. When I don't have it, I miss it. And like today, for example, I needed GPS. I, it was in the glove box. I was too lazy and I was doing it on my phone. I'm like, man, this sucks. And I literally just pulled over and installed it really quick because it was so much easier to, to have the GPS right up here versus down here. So I think it's definitely worth the money. But let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions about it or if there's something I didn't cover in the video, please let me know your questions in the comments. I'll be sure to respond to those. But other than that, everybody, till next time, let me know what you are driving hard. Yeah.